Hello, welcome and welcome back, fourth and long fans. It's your AFL correspondent, Doug Coach Donnie Hess here, back with another interview going across the states with different AFL fans across the states. And today I have a very unique one. We have Vadim Jerv for all the way out in LA. How are you doing, Vadim? Doing awesome, Donnie. How are you? I am not doing too bad, sir. Just living the life as best I can in today's crazy world. So so, sir, you have a very unique name, definitely not something that I've heard normally. So I got to ask, kind of what's your story outside of footy? Kind of what's the story of Vadim? Uh, well, I was born in southern Ukraine in a city called Odessa. I moved to the United States in early 2014 as a part of cultural exchange program because of everything that's been going on in the country at the time and all sorts of political turmoil that I was involved in. I filed for political asylum, so I'm technically an asylee, which I got granted my asylum last year, so I'm on the path to green card at the moment, and um, yeah, I've been, in, I've been in the country for six and a half years, been in LA for most of it, I live in South Carolina, Connecticut, and just been across the country at all kinds of places. That's crazy, kind of just a world traveler coming from coming from Eastern Europe and all that, and now in the states and, and visiting several different states from all kind of different parts of the country. So, so I gotta ask, how does a guy who moves from the Ukraine now here in the states? How do you find Australian rules footy? I have a, I feel like I have a uniquely not unique story because the first time that I that I got introduced to. Australian rules football was like a year and a half ago. I'm a huge Conan O'Brien fan. Conan has a segment where he travels the world, goes to different places, hangs out with people, sort of kind of shares the culture and whatever it is the folks are into in their respective countries. And in their Australia episode, he was hanging out with the Swans. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really give it a thought, you know, being from Eastern Europe, being from Europe in general, people have all kinds of sports that they're really proud of. It's their thing. Didn't really think about it twice at the time. And when the 2020 season started, I am just like everyone else in this country is probably watching Pat McAfee show. And something remotely similar they were talking about. I was like, I feel like I know what it's about, but not necessarily. So I looked it up. I was like, oh, yeah, that's the Conan situation. That's what it was. And I watched a couple of highlights. Every time people hit each other, he can sign me up. And um, I had the longest time figuring out, like, I need, I need to find a team. I had to root for somebody. It was just becoming so stressful because each team is so unique. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go with the Swan. I watched, that was the first team that I got introduced to. Swans are going to be my team. Like the deep down inside that process of just choosing whichever one was most comfortable at the time did not feel right with me. So when the season started, I got the watch AFL app to make sure that I don't skip any games. So I watched, because they played one game and then it was like a month off because of COVID. So I watched every single game that happened with no fans on. And when I was watching Melbourne beat Carlton by like one point, four seconds left before the game was over, I was like, yeah, that sounds like, that sounds like the boys I can roll with. And then I spent some time researching as far as going back and the history of the club and it's been kind of in the draft for the last what, 55 years at this point. Not the most attractive for people who are interested in winning flags every year, but it's, it's just, I don't know, it's hard to explain the, the style of footy they play, the players themselves, the Twitter Melbourne community, which is self-deprecating bunch, just to say, <laughs> say the least. Just all around, felt, I felt incredibly welcome, and it felt like the right choice for me. Awesome. That's, that's a cool story. And the best part is, is that you didn't, you didn't just go with the first one you know, is that you tried to find yeah. one that kind of captured you and who you are. So, so you kind of said it there, you're a Melbourne Demons fan. And for those of you who are watching the video, you're rocking the Melbourne Demons jersey. That's awesome. So, so kind of going off that, so, so Melbourne Demons, so we already know your club, um, kind of 
now that you've kind of had a full season through, I mean, kind of tell me what, what kind of is your fandom? Like, would you consider yourself like you're going to get up at 2 a.m. to watch every single game or are you going to watch the highlights? I mean, since you have the watch AFL app, it's a little bit easier to watch it at time yeah. delay. But I mean, how would you express your fandom to, to the fans of this podcast? I would not be up at 2 in the morning because I have a – my my uh my fiance calls me a sleep police um i'm very particular about sleeping so there's no lack of sleep in this household but because i do have a i, I do have a watch afl app so i make sure that i don't look at my phone first thing that i wake up because i wouldn't want to get any notifications to tip me off no spoilers directly run to my laptop pull the app up hook it up to my tv and i got the i got the scarf on i got my 2020 membership scarf on i got my sharing team ball with me i got the whole the whole setup and then for the next couple of hours i would not recommend anybody touching me because i'm i'm probably zoned out and not paying attention i'm i'm all watching it and it's obviously involves screaming and yelling and, and name calling and a lot of things that i don't actually mean that is awesome. That is awesome. You're you're far more animated than I am. I, I have to say, I, I kind of try to calm myself down when I watch the games. It's, it's always more fun with me, but I'm also one of those. I will get up at two in the morning and watch the game live just because for some weird reason for me, it just, it feels better to watch it live, but I yeah. have watched them on tape delay. I'm not, I, I'm not in no way telling anybody if you, if you, you, don't have to wake up at 2.30 to be a, a, a solid fan of any of these clubs. And just the fact that you're taking the time to watch it is so cool for me because I love the sport. So I see you have your own footy. So I got to ask, with you being out in L.A., do you think you'd ever want to play the game um, since you do have a few clubs there in the L.A. area? Yeah, I've actually contacted Los Angeles Dragons, uh, which were very cool, but COVID restrictions, obviously, nobody's working out. Mm. I was I was dead set on actually coming out and trying to train with them, but there was no no organized workouts at the moment. And I think it's going anything to be happening till probably spring of next year. So I will I will try to make the time and actually go and kick the footy with the guys. But I have I have three of them actually. So I go to the park by myself, three footies. I kick them, run after them come back i always always feel like i look like there's a gif of millhouse from simpson throwing a frisbee and running after it picking it up and throwing it back to himself that is that is me that's kicking the ball running after it bringing that, it back that is awesome that is awesome but definitely definitely once the covid restrictions are down the la dragons i know rick shibani from there in fact i'm actually going to chat with him because i think he's going to be my he's going to be one of my other fans i get to interview later he's a good contact to reach out to with the dragons i know they're a good bunch there's several teams there in the la area so if you do mm -hmm. once COVID is down definitely because they're always looking for new players and it sounds like you're you're pretty avid about the sport so so going back to the afl now i got ask favorite demon currently and then since you did say you kind of dove into the history do you have any old the older demons that you that you've grown fond of current demon is clayton oliver has to be uh, it, it was really hard i remember facing myself with the question like oh who is my favorite player and there are so many and i mean i love the team it's just from christian Petraka to max gone to jack viney you know but yeah, something about Clayton Oliver never falls, just keeps going, bites down the mouthpiece. Just, yeah, I love the guy. The attitude, just the way he plays the game. It's, yeah, he, he's definitely, there. there's a gap between him and the rest of the team, in my opinion. And as far as going back historically, I mean, you have to say Gary Lyon. You mm -hmm. have to say Gary Lyon just because, like, half of it is obviously his play. He's a tremendous football player. Mm -hmm. And I... I've spent at this point probably hours watching him on the couch. I watch a lot of Australian TV since I got into AFL. And his, I know he, I know he, he feels like a parent who really loves his team passionately, but they keep messing up with inconsistent play. And you can see the, the lack of patience in him but it's very respectful kind of lack of patience. Mm -hmm. Like he would never hold back, even though everyone knows that that's like, that's Gary's team. That's demons, but he's always super harsh and people are really mad about it. But I, I kind of appreciate the fact that 
even though you have that connection to your former team, there's a lot of tough love going on, especially with him being a prominent picture in Australian media now. Yeah, so yeah, I'll, I'll say Gear Lion. Yeah, his his brutal honesty sometimes is is refreshing, especially nowadays, because he he just he 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 loves the club so much, and it's so cool to hear it. And I it's it's hard to pick Melbourne because they have such a young list. They have a team that's really kind of growing. It's just they've been so inconsistent. I think that's been kind of the toughest thing for me. It's like I, I you can see it. They made the finals a couple of years ago, and then this last couple of seasons, they just have not been able to re redo that magic that they did getting into the finals the year before but i think maybe next year they've had a few changes i think the addition of ben brown this off season i think is really going to help them um, yeah i'm 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 thrilled about that one we, we've struggled in the forward 50 pretty badly this year yes. and i think that, i think the reason why like i am so so frustrated in a sense with melbourne because one thing that we are not lacking is the talent mm-hmm if there's one thing that we have plenty is the talent, like at, at every position, our defensive line is nuts. We have the best ruck in the game, mm-hmm. possibly the best midfielder in Christian Petrarca, but forward line was something that we kind of had issues with and we've been having people in and out. So having Ben Brown is sort of a stable presence, someone who is reliable. We, I mean, we've seen him play at North Melbourne for years at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. We lost a couple of people that I was, uh, passionate about so to speak in mm. the trading period but we'll be all right yeah so it's so like kind of rewinding just a tiny bit and, and i kind of brought it up a little bit but kind of what were your thoughts on last season i, I know with mm. covid the covid change going up into the hubs and kind of it every team kind of handled it a little bit differently i mean what were your thoughts on on the demons last year were you, were you disappointed were you kind of did you understand because just the insanity that COVID kind of brought on the season or it kind of, what, what were your thoughts on last year? I think it's a, it's a mixture of kind of frustration knowing that you have such a talented roster that for some reason week after week doesn't live up to its potential, but also understanding that everybody kind of all over the place with moving and training in different grounds and us having such a young roster and relatively inexperienced in AFL period, putting that kind of restriction and then moving around on them would probably a recipe for kind of constructive disaster in a sense. You're going to work out here one day, then you have to travel to Northern Australia and then you have to travel across back West. And it's just, yeah, I don't see how somebody who got drafted at 18, 19 years old, having very limited life experience, having to travel the country, not seeing your family with a bunch of men you don't really know all that well for being entirely honest so there, there's definitely definitely element of oh we lost because so and so but then hey other teams have made the finals you know everyone else had a better season but what I really did appreciate is Simon Goodwin's approach to playing wherever whenever whoever at any given moment if we need to get on the plane at three in the morning and fly we'll do it you never heard Melbourne's coaching staff or anyone on the team say, Hey, this is a problem. I'm going to go back or this doesn't work. It's just, Hey, we're just here to play footy, uh, good or bad. We're just going to show up week in week out to do our job. Yeah. And it's, it's, kind of one of those where there were, there were several teams that kind of did not handle it well. And, and Melbourne was kind of one of those where towards the end, you thought they're starting to get it. They could potentially make the finals and then just had a couple of rough games there late in the year. I was, I was almost a little bit disappointed that that they were one of those teams that I remember discussing with Ross from fourth and from this podcast that um, I said, they were the team that I honestly thought could make it. I thought Collingwood was on their way out and Melbourne was on their way in and then just, it just did not have the solid performance at the end. So I, was, I still see a lot of good things. Um, so going from that, we kind of already talked about it just a tiny bit earlier, bringing up the fact that you would bring in Ben, ben Brown in the off season, which gives you that really solid full forward, a guy that's pretty consistently 60 goal. But um, what were your kind of thoughts on, the, on their off season? Have you been keeping an eye on it? Are you kind of, or are you kind of one of those, well, I'll pay attention once we get a little bit closer to the season. Um, I, I was paying attention to a degree. I'm still kind of getting a hold of the whole draft situation. So that I'm not entirely familiar with, but a couple of people that I really enjoyed watching like Mitch Hannon, 
and Braden Proust, they left. You know, Hannon is with the doggies now, which, I mean, good for him, but he's a good player. Oscar McDonald is out. Um, his role seemed to be relatively definitive in the previous season, so his departure from the Ds was kind of strange, but I have not, I have not gotten a chance to like, read enough of people's opinions and analysis of movements within the team to really be informed as to what's going on. But I have my own ideas as to, like, what are we probably going to be looking moving forward with a larger forward in the front 50 and things like that. But I, I just feel like consistency is, is where we at and it kind of falls on coaching. We have made a lot of changes when it comes to the coaching staff. So mm-hmm. fingers crossed it's going to be for the best. Yeah, it's all kind of up in the air. Not everybody, not everybody takes the time into it. But um, the draft did just recently happen. Um, I will definitely reach back out with you after this podcast is over, and I can give you kind of who they kind of brought in in the draft this year, kind of what they're kind of looking at, um, if you'd like me to. Oh yeah, for sure. Awesome. Yeah, I would love to. I w- I will definitely definitely do that. So so moving on from there. Um, not only am I a big supporter of the men's game, but I'm also a supporter of the women's game. I love the AFLW. I think, I think it's great to see, see Australia kind of uh, accepting it and bringing it on and trying to improve the game. So, so I go from you, the Melbourne demons have a women's team. Mm-hmm. Do, are you going to keep an eye on their women's team? Are you going to be just as supportive of the women's team? Or is it going to be something you're going to wait a little bit to kind of get into? I have watched all of the women's game, which was only four in the Demons mm-hmm. game that happened this season. Their season, unfortunately, ended without them coming back. And I, enjoy, I, I enjoyed it. It's definitely, it's, it's almost not the same sport in a sense, because when you watch the men's game, you know, it's 60 yard kicks from the center and just the, it, the rules are the same, but the dynamic is very different. It's a lot more methodical because you kind of have to, you smaller women tend to be smaller a little slower than men so it's kind of a different strategy and the whole planning around it but i do enjoy it yeah i don't know about if i'm going to be spending any more time money on memberships at this point because it's been pretty rough but i will definitely i will definitely keep watching it yeah and, and, and no and there's no reason that you have to force to it but it's, it's definitely one of those that if you have the opportunity to keep oh, yeah. an eye on and i know it's i i think there's there's a lot of talented women and I, th- I think the the skill gap is going to come closer as the years go on i mean as i told another person in one interview i said you got to remember that this is only the fourth or fifth season that the aflw and i'm like that's like basically saying that the skill set that we're used to now is compared to 1897 there's a massive yeah. improvement of skills and abilities from that time. So we can't sit here and, and say, well, the women's game isn't any good. Well, it's, it's learning. And plus you don't have the talent yeah. yet. There's still a lot of youth girls that are going to grow up that did not play footy. They had to stop at 13. So now that's changing. Women's footy is growing in the country. It's growing here in the States as well. The fact that we now have Danny Marshall, who is a U.S. born player played in the USAFL is now playing for the Western Bulldogs. So I think for a lot of Americans is that we're catching on to it now because we have a personal connection to Danny Marshall, but I, I think it's an amazing thing to see the women's game grow. And I'm super excited. I wish the Swans had a team. They don't unfortunately yet, but I'm crossing my fingers. Their license will come very soon. So all right, so from the women's game, then I, I, I love finding out what is your favorite game that you have ever seen. It doesn't have to be live. You could have watched mm-hmm. it on tape delay. What's your favorite game you've ever seen? It can be a Demons game, okay. but it doesn't have to be. The best game that I've ever seen was actually not the Demons game. It was Saints, Gold Coast. I think it was around either around 13 or around 15 this season. Mm-hmm. Both of them were playing such good football. Gold Coast is a lot more inconsistent than the Saints this year. But that was one of those games when I think it was like 74 to 71. It was like two-point difference. And like neither of the teams just wanted to lose. And Saints obviously had a lot more at stake than Gold Coast at the time. But just watching them go at it until like the last 10 seconds maybe. I mean, that's – I've never seen a bet AFL game, if we're being entirely honest. Mm-hmm. Like even the – quote unquote worst AFL games are awesome. But that was that was definitely by far the best one I've ever seen. It's just just a stubborn not willingness to lose no matter what, not even looking forward to 
the ladder or getting into the finals, just that this is the game that we're going to win no matter what. And those two attitudes clashing until one team somehow barely escapes with the victory. Like that was, that was definitely the most memorable one. I think I rewatched it. Those here and now mentality games, those are a ton of fun to watch. And, and I love those. And there's several games this season. The, the one thing I got to give COVID is it gave us a lot of nail biter games like Frio Carlton that comes down to a final kick. Carlton Port Adelaide comes down to a final kick. So many really good games. I, I, have, to, I have to say that there were several games this season that I, I, I could go back and watch any time. Um, there's a couple of Demons games that I saw that I thought were really good this year. So definitely Definitely, definitely a little bit of a tighter ladder when it comes to games. So, Vadim, I got to say, this has been an awesome chat. It's, it's great to, to meet somebody who was not a U.S.-born person originally. So it's, it's great to have that, that variety. Um, it's awesome to, to chat with you. Um, it, since you are on Twitter, if you want to reach out. Thank to you so let, much. To, to, if you want to let anybody know your social media, that way, if there's any other Demons fans that want to get in contact with you, maybe oh, yeah, add some sure. more Demons, um, floor is yours. Yeah, uh, I'm on Twitter at, at the Dream Jurov. It's V-A-D-Y-M-Z-H-Y-R-O-V. Um, Demon fans, come on out. I have a whole bunch of followers from Australia, and they're all very lovely. So there's a lot of that going on in my Twitter. But and that's the only social media I have, so don't have an Instagram, don't have a Facebook, anything like that. Yeah. But that's that's plenty. I get plenty of social media action there. Yeah, I, I definitely say sometimes it gets to kind of nuts. But I, actually, before before we wrap this up, I have to say I have to thank the Ruby Demon, the Ruby Demons group, because that's actually how I got a hold of him, how I got a hold of the Deem. I have to say one of the best things about Australian Twitter is, is that if you send out a tweet at just the right time, you can find a lot of cool people. Um, I had to thank Demon Nation. It was awesome getting to know several people who had reached out and, and wanted to be part of this. Um, so I, I have to admit that was awesome to be able to find it yes i'm a swans fan but i have a little little part of my heart that loves the d's I, i've always lo- i always loved them the the old the old team the, the oldest team in melbourne the oldest team in, in all of football so i, I had to, i have to say that your, your fan base was, was a lot of fun to interact with and it was great getting to know you sir through through twitter and this right is right back at you this has been an awesome conversation um, if you ever want to chat demons or footy ever again please feel free to reach out um And that's all I have, 4th and Long fans. You guys have a good night.